Now, I know there's a lot of you who are new to the channel for FM19 or for this series in particular, so you may not be familiar with Backing the Burrow, the big series that we did last year. Those of you that were around last year, though, it's time to indulge in some Backing the Burrow reminiscing. It's the return of Sir Tom Elliott. Hello and welcome to part 7 of non to Legend, I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode we have that all important FA Trophy game at home against Darlington, it's going to be a backing the Borough reunion, plus we're going to be playing another league game away against Hampton and Richmond in the conference staff. Nothing's happened since yesterday because we weren't planning on doing this, this kind of caught us by surprise with the FA Trophy draw, so you've, you're completely up to date with where we are, this is what the league table looks like, we're sat comfortably in the playoffs, hopefully going to continue to push into them in the second of today's game against Hampton. But really, this is all about the Darlington game. I, obviously, we don't know who's going to be in the Darlington team, but if we have a little look at who they've got in their squad, it is a bit of a who's who of some of the heroes that we had on back in the Boa last year. So, Nuneaton veterans from last season. We've got Luke Trotman. We've got Mitchell Glover. We've got Jordan Nicholson. We've got Alex Henshaw. We've got Sir Tom Elliott. Joe Wheatley, who was one of mine, but wasn't actually a Nuneaton. I signed him for Nuneaton later on in the save. He wasn't there in the, at Nuneaton in real life. Is there any more knocking around the place? I think they're the ones. But that front three, well, the, the attacking midfield three, if they all play, I mean, Mitchell Glover and Axe Henschel in particular are going to have a point to prove because neither of them really got a chance in doing it. Jordan Nicholson was the early star of back in the borough and Sir Tom Elliott was obviously... The all-time hero of the save, possibly eclipsed by Sir Enoch Nuhu later on. Aaron Davies, I think, used to play for Posh in real life as well. There he is, look. Well, let's get into the game against Darlington and hope that we get a glimpse of Sir Tom Elliott in this alternate universe. This is the team that we're putting out there. We've got McDonough in goal. A back four of Wyatt, Bender, Mills and Hurd. With Wilkin, Noble, Sambu and Hopkins in midfield. And Merson and Spruce up front we're keeping a very careful eye on Sir Tom Elliott today not just because he's a hero but because of the romance of the possibility of us signing him in the summer he's out of contract with Darlington in the summer obviously I want to see him play today but part of me is also thinking well if he's not getting in their team there he is though Sir Tom Elliott is playing they've got the Nuneaton three as their attacking line they haven't got Trotman in the team but just having Sir Tom Elliott and those three we need to be keeping an eye on all of those players. If you have no idea what I'm talking about because you didn't watch Back in the Borough, you should go and watch Back in the Borough. Until now, it was the greatest series I've ever done. Obviously, this one is going to be so much better. Um, all the best. At, um, yeah, let's just have fun. I mean, I'm going to have fun. It's only the FA Trophy. I'm not that bothered about the FA Trophy in general, but I just want to I want to see my, my boys, my old boys from last year. I want to I want to get in touch with them again. This is where I slip all four of them a business card and say, "Look, lads, it's nice down here in St Albans. Admittedly, it's quite hard finding somewhere to live, but you know, we we we're, we're a cool bunch. Come and hang out with us. You don't want to be all the way up there. Oh, Wheatley's in the team. So is that Wheatley? Have they got Wheatley and Elliot in midfield? So their entire midfield five is backing the Borough legends, veterans. I wouldn't necessarily put Mitchell Glover as a legend, but he was in the series for a long time. I just never gave him an opportunity. Here we go. We've got a break on here, though, but Spruce can't get hold of the ball. There's Sir Tom in midfield. Noble. Um, this this season's midfield maestro, and what a ball over the top to Spruce. If David Noble was 15 years younger, he'd have the opportunity to become as much of a legend as Sir Tom Elliott became. But unfortunately, at age 36, this is probably his only season. But the corner comes in from Noble and Merson, directs it towards goal. It ends up back with Noble again. Wyatt to Wilkin. We've kept, kept possession here really well. Uh, but in the end, it's going to be breaking through Alex Henshaw. And that that midfield five is just, it's blowing my mind. Obviously, Tommy Wright, who was the Nuneaton manager in real life just before, it was around this time last year, around the time I started working with him. I've got Tommy Wright's phone number in my phone because he was the manager when I first went to see them. And then he left to go to Darlington before the series started. So the plans I had to work with Tommy Wright kind of fell apart a little bit. But 
it's mad that he's taken so many of his players with him. I guess that's just how football works, isn't it? These are the players that he likes, so he's taken them up there. But to move the entire midfield from Nuneet and up to Darlington is madness. Um, I think we have been the better team. Go out there and prove it in this second half, gentlemen. We need to keep an eye on Noble's fitness levels. A part of me said, I want to see Sir Tom Elliott score a screamer. That obviously I still I want to win the match as well. We could do with the money from a cup run. I don't know how much money there is in the FA Trophy. I know it's probably not going to be as lucrative as an FA Cup run would have been, but we are in the Conference South. If we can have a fairly deep run in the FA Trophy, there's got to be money to be had there, if just from attendances from playing the extra games. Wilkin now, on the left wing. We've got men in the middle, but Wilkin goes it alone. The benefits of him playing on the left wing as a right foot and footer means he can cut inside like that and take those shots. And now we've got another corner through Noble. Noble floats it across, but it's headed clear. And Noble, I mean, that was it was three yards away from him. He's not going to... He's not going to break a sweat and get into the ball there. He's already tired, bless him. He's going to have another 10 minutes, maybe. We've got we've got Percy on the bench. We've got Moyo on the bench. We've got a few options to come on for Noble. Big cross towards Merson. And Sam Merson with his 10th goal of the season. It was a great cross from Spruce, who is finally starting to turn into the, the proper advanced forward we were hoping for. He arrived as a poacher, but he's turning into a proper forward. He's out there on the wing there. Lovely cross to Merson. And Merson just nods it past the keeper. 1-0 up with an hour on the clock. If we can grab another one, then we can let Sir Tom Elliott grab it. Oh, Sir Tom's looking anxious. It's because he's he's really, he's just noticed he's playing for the wrong team. He's getting he's getting deja vu flashbacks to an alternate universe where he's the main man of my team and he wants to come and play for us. Wilkin, ball over the top for Spruce to chase into the channels again. He's not really chasing that down at all though, is he? That was... I expected a little bit more from him there. There's Jordan Nicholson. We've not seen much of him today, but we know how good he's capable of being as a shot from way, way out. Jordan Nicholson was our player of the season at Nuneaton for, I think, each of the first three seasons and then went on to play in League One. So Jordan Nicholson has got a little bit about him. Heard heads clear towards Hopkins. Hopkins, with space to run into, plays it inside to Merson. Merson is tackled by Joe Wheatley. And now um, Darlington come at us again. And it's with Mills and he just lumps it forward for Sam Merson to chase and he doesn't get anywhere near it. Noble now, forward towards Spruce. Spruce, with more, he's doing a lot of running today and Merson's in the middle again. Can he get across him from the other side? He can't. But we're uh, we, we, Spruce finds the ball back again. All the way back to Ben Hurd. And I think it's going back even further, isn't it? No, Hurd with the cross from very, very deep. But it falls to Hopkins. Hopkins with the chance to cross. And it's cleared and... We can calm down a little bit now. I'm, I'm overexcited. I'm enjoying this so much, seeing so many of my players from previous seasons. We need to take Noble off, though. And I haven't got a mid proper midfielder on the bench, so Percy's going to have to come on and play in midfield. That's a bit of an oversight on my part. In fact, we probably need to we need to change one of the strikers as well, just for energy. Although, Spru they've both had very good games, so perhaps we won't. I need to... I need to make another substitution, but because I already came off the tactic screen, I can't go back into it, I don't think. Wilkin now, cutting inside from that left wing again. He's been very dangerous doing that, and he's fouled by Wheatley. And is Noble still on the pitch? He's not. So it's Ben Hurd, and Hurd, we've already seen him score one of those free kicks this year. He tests the keeper again. Hurd is a bit of a set-piece specialist as well, just like Noble. Right, what are we going to do? Wilkin, Wilkin could come off... I think what we're going to do is we're going to take off Wilkin and shuffle the defence around. So we're actually going to bring Ben Morgan on. I think you've seen me do this change before, where we just kind of shuffle the defence around a bit. So Bender moves out to left back. Wyatt goes forward on that left-hand side, where he is a lethal crosser as well. And it just it allows us to solidify the defence, whilst giving us a different option going forward. Sam Merson's shattered. We're going to take off Merson. And we're going to bring on we're going to bring on Banton actually because Moyo not particularly comfortable playing as a pressing forward. Banton is, and that's a good save from McDonough. I don't want anyone who isn't one of my former players scoring against me. I don't mind if Tom Elliott sticks it in from there, but I'm not having some fella I've never heard of doing it. That's not acceptable. Spruce now can he play it forward towards Banton? He does. Banton's got room to chase into using his pace, and Banton scores, and it's two 0 on 83 minutes. And Banton did really really well there. I'm not really sure why our two strikers had swapped around that way you would think that the advanced forward would be the one staying forward and the pressing forward um or is it are they called pressing forwards they are aren't they now 
you'd think he'd be the one staying back, but apparently it's the other way around, and Banton is lightning quick and a decent finisher, as he's shown there. Moyo's probably still a little bit miffed that he's the one who's had to stay on the bench, but there's my justification for it, and it's with Sambu in midfield. Over the top to Spruce again. Spruce! Spruce did brilliantly there and deserved a goal. He has played incredibly well today. Two assists and just the composure he showed there deserved it to just fall the other side of the post. Um, I feel a little bit bad for Sir Tom Elliott. Bless him. He's frustrated. He's had a terrible game. I am questioning whether we want to be signing him now. But I obviously I'm going to. If the opportunity comes up, he's top of my shopping list for the summer because he's he's my hero and he's a lovely man. And we've knocked Darlington out of the FA Trophy, which is awesome. I don't know I don't know how many rounds there is in this competition. That was the second round, though. And we keep on plugging away at the FA Trophy. Looks like we've got a draw coming up as well. And another game, which doesn't tell us when it will be yet. But we'll do the draw. And then we'll play Hampton Richmond. I hope you all enjoyed catching up with Sir Tom Elliott. Hopefully not for the last time in this series. Right, FA Trophy, third round draw then. How many teams are left in? There's still quite a few teams left, I think. I think this competition has a long way to go yet. Um, so Stockport play Barnet. Sutton or Eastleigh play Slough. Fylde play Worldstone. Halifax play St Albans. Halifax, how good are they? They're in the National League, aren't they? Fifth in the National League. I think that's probably where our FA Trophy run ends. But we've got another... We've got another channel legend, Dale Southwell, from the very first non-league to legend four years ago now. We had him at Boston and he was a superstar. Well, it looks like we're going to be carrying on the, the meeting old friends tour in the FA Trophy. Let's just finish off the rest of that draw. When do we play that game? Halifax. I might have to show you that one as well, just for Dale Southwell. Oh, is this season ever going to end? little bit of transfer news going into the Hampton Richmond game. We have released another player. Um, where is our released list? Dave Jedju, um, who it's not just because I've never quite been able to say his name properly, but he's another one who was here on a non-contract. I mean, you can see there we should only sign him as a last resort. He was here on a non-contract. He was unhappy about lack of game time. Came to me and said, I know you only see me as a backup, but I'd like to play more games. I said, no. He said, well, can I leave then? I said yes, so I released him. So Dave Deadju has left the club. Remember, we did sign a new midfielder uh, before the last episode, though. Yoan Rutty-Smith, so he um, he's younger, more potential, more current ability as well, according to our star ratings. So he hasn't played for us yet, but I'm fairly comfortable. We've still got four first-team midfielders, um, including Rutty-Smith now. So it keeps the squad nice and trim. Um, we're still... Still spending over on our wage budget, but not by as much as we were, which is good. We're slowly, slowly trimming the squad down whilst also extending contracts that we want to keep in place for next season. So next season's team is coming along nicely and it's only January. I kind of don't want to get promoted because I'm going to I'm building a good conference South team. If we get promoted, it's going to ruin everything. Uh, but we're not making any changes for the Hampton and Richmond team. Um, game, not team. We're not changing the team for the Hampton and Richmond game. Let's get straight into it. We played well against Darlington in the last match. So fingers crossed we can continue our good form. Um, I do expect to win today because Hampton and Richmond are down in the, the nether regions of the, of the... I mean, has anyone said that before? They're down in the nether regions of the league. Look at that. They're in the relegation zone. Um, that's not going to become a thing. I'm not going to describe a team in that way ever again. But I do expect to win that. I don't. It's it is an away game though, so maybe I hope I've not put them under too much pressure. I think that's the first time all season I've expected a win in an away game in the league. So hopefully I'm not just showing off for you lot, and it will actually work. But looking at the uh, look, at how many teams are in this league? There's 22 teams, so 42 games over the course of the season. So after this one. There's another 14 games left. So we're exactly two-thirds of the way through the season after this game. And finding ourselves nicely nestled into the playoff positions. Um, I did mention a couple of episodes ago about how the playoffs are a little bit weird at this level now. And they are a little bit weird because... I think, and someone will no doubt correct me if I'm wrong, but I did watch a video about this that kind of explained it all to me, but then I might have forgotten. Um, Spruce has just put us 1-0 up. We've yet another good finish. I'll tell you what, James Spruce, good signing. But the way the playoffs work, there's three teams that get relegated from the National League and obviously two feeder leagues to that. So you need to get three promoted teams out of two. But as you can see from the league table, when that reappears... 
there's six teams go into the playoffs in each of the two feeder leagues. So the two champions go up automatically and then there's another 12 teams across two leagues vying for that third promotion spot. So they have their playoffs in their own division as the same as they were last year, but then you also have a super playoff. So you can actually win the playoffs in your own division and still not get promoted because if you then lose against the team that won the playoffs from the conference north... You then don't go up. I think that's how it works. I could be describing the system from the league one step down that I was res- that I was researching for home. Um, I'll double check the details. But the playoffs themselves, because there's six teams in it, it's one leg affairs, and it's all based whether you're home or away is based on how you do, how you where you finished in the league. So if you finish in seventh place in the um, in the conference south, which I mean. If we get into the playoffs, we're likely to be sixth or seventh. So if we finish there, we're in the first round of playoffs, which will be sixth place plays fifth at fifth's home ground, seventh plays fourth at fourth's home ground. And then the winner of that goes through to play a semi-final against the teams who finished in second and third at their home grounds. So you're guaranteed to be away in the semi-final. And then the playoff final, I'm not sure if that, does that take place somewhere neutral? You can tell I've tried to learn about this and I'm still a little bit confused. Someone down in the comments will no doubt do a thorough explanation and whoever does the best explanation of how the Conference North and South promotion system works will get their post pinned at the top of the comments because I would like to understand it properly myself. I am happy with how things are going. We've had a cracking first half. Our two strikers, as as well as Moyo played earlier in the season, he was, and he was getting assists off of Merson, but he wasn't really giving anything back. Whereas Spruce and Merson playing together, they're both scoring, they're both assisting. They're just a better partnership than Merson and Moyo was. So it's a shame that Moyo's lost his place. But I don't see how I don't see how we stop playing this combination of players up from when it's led to us being on such a long run of good results. And Noble from just on the edge of the area. Noble, it's probably getting towards the point where we can take David Noble off. Um, because we're already 2-0 up. He's already getting a little bit tired. We'll probably try and push him to like 65 minutes, but as soon as that drops below 70%, Noble comes off. Um, did I say 70 or 75? I mean 70. In fact, he might even make it. Is he there? Is he there? He's made it to the 68th minute, pretty much where I would have taken him off anyway. Um, so Noble can come off for Percy. Percy can come and just slot straight into that spot in midfield. Um, Hopkins, uh, who else should we take off? We don't really need to make much. Everyone else is playing very well, apart from Sambu. But we don't really have anyone who can come on for Sambu because I don't have a central midfielder on the bench because I've just released him. Um, so we're going to leave Sambu on, playing quite poorly. I guess we'll take off... Fitness-wise, everyone's roughly similar. We'll take off Hopkins and get Zane Banton on on the right wing. Give Banton a little bit more game time because he came off the bench and did very well in that last game. So it's only fair to continue to give him game time. Sam Merson now looking tired as well, so we can bring Moyo on for him. Well, what do you know? Moyo's a natural pressing forward as well. I didn't know that about him. What a manager I am. All this time I've been favouring Banton over Moyo to come off the bench because he's a natural pressing forward. It turns out Moyo is as well. How did I not even... I've just never tried to play him there before, clearly. So all that time I was playing... Why was I playing Moyo further forward than Merson then all that time? Banton's just got himself sent off as well. What a silly goose. Um, so we'll drop Moyo back into midfield, swap him and Wilkin over. Spruce can just play up on his own for the last three or four minutes and hopefully see out the game. Let's just tell him to concentrate because we've got to concentrate for these last few minutes. Um, Spruce on the edge of the area. Can he conjure up another chance? No, he plays it all the way back into our own half, but it doesn't matter because the game is over. Two very comfortable wins, and I've learned something about one of my players that I really should have... I can't believe I didn't already know that. I feel like that's something I probably did know and then forgot about. What a monster I am. But, importantly... A third of the way through the season, we're on 52 points, only six points off of the automatic promotion spots and well in the playoff mix at the moment, which is awesome with 14 games left to go. If you enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos and thank you very much for watching.